In 1976, Bugsy Malone brought an unexpected twist to the gangster genre by swapping out bullets for cream pies. This unique film, directed by Alan Parker, features a cast entirely comprised of child actors, adding a whimsical touch to the gritty gangster narrative. As you watch, keep an eye out for funny, shocking, and even sad moments that pepper this unconventional tale. Did you find a particular role in the movie that became your favorite, or perhaps a classic Hollywood actor who stole the show for you? Share your thoughts in the comments below. We're curious to know your take on this extraordinary cinematic experiment. Before you go, we'd love to hear your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Bugsy Malone. Drop your stories in the comments and let's celebrate the unique charm of this film together. Stay tuned for more interesting facts and discussions. There's a lot more coming your way. Keep watching, keep engaging, and let's dive deeper into the world of Bugsy Malone. Alan Parker's 1976 film, Bugsy Malone, marked his first foray into feature film directing, showcasing a unique concept by employing an all-child cast in a musical set against a Prohibition-era gangster backdrop. Notable among the young ensemble is Jodie Foster, whose impressive performance follows her notable role in Taxi Driver. Scott Baio, playing the central character, Bugsy, later gained fame in Happy Days. The film skillfully combines the innocence of its youthful cast with the gritty noir genre, featuring child actors portraying gangsters and showgirls. Despite the potential challenges of a musical with only child actors, the end result is commendable. The color palette, the adaptation of props such as pedal-powered automobiles and scaled-down weapons, and the meticulous costume design contribute to the film's visual appeal. Parker's offbeat musical remixes typical gangster flick tropes into a children's comedy adventure with catchy songs, creating a lively and entertaining experience. Scott Baio's portrayal of the streetwise but broke boxing promoter alongside the love interest Blousy Brown, played by Flory Duggar, adds depth to the storyline. Jodie Foster steals the show as Talala, Fat Sam's girlfriend, showcasing acting prowess beyond her years. While the film's interplay among the young cast occasionally feels clumsy and forced, the real strength lies in its musical numbers, leaving audiences humming for days. The adult singers, led by Paul Williams, enhance the musical experience, even if their voices don't always seamlessly match the youthful faces on screen. Bugsy Malone is a charming film that successfully parodies the gangster noir genre, offering an enjoyable romp that opens up this typically serious genre to a wider audience. Whether you appreciate gangster noir or not, the film's ability to affectionately poke fun at itself makes it worth a watch. In conclusion, Bugsy Malone is a testament to Alan Parker's directorial ambition and creativity. The film's ambitious choice of an all-child cast in a musical set against a gangster backdrop pays off, resulting in a charming and entertaining piece of cinema that stands out for its unique approach. Paul Williams, the musical maestro, penned all the tunes for the film, lending his voice to many of Bugsy's lines performed by Scott Bale. The movie secured the 19th spot on UK Channel 4's 100 Greatest Musicals list in 2003 as voted by viewers. The extensive paperwork to permit children to work in the film was a bureaucratic mountain. Each young actor underwent an individual medical examination and obtained a work permit. This intricate process involved over 33 English councils, along with navigating the bureaucratic intricacies of New York and Los Angeles. In the making of the 1976 film, various challenges and interesting details emerge, shedding light on the unique production of Bugsy Malone. One notable aspect involves the pedal cars used in the movie. Contrary to appearances, these cars could only function with a single person driving. Attempts to accommodate passengers proved futile. Astute viewers may observe the presence of propsmen discreetly pushing the cars from behind in certain scenes. A distinct revelation comes from Eddie Muller on TCM, who discloses that the child actors, despite their on-screen performances, never actually sang the songs. Instead, they mined the lyrics while the actual singing was executed by adults. Notably, Paul Williams, the film's songwriter, predominantly lent his voice for the musical numbers. This decision, as later regretted by director Alan Parker, was a pragmatic choice due to time constraints during the production. The genesis of the narrative is traced back to a moment of inspiration for Alan Parker. During a car journey from London to Derbyshire, he crafted the story to entertain his children. His son's innocent query, pondering why children couldn't be the heroes, planted the seed that eventually blossomed into the movie's unconventional narrative. 
These intriguing insights into the making of the film offer a glimpse into the creative decisions and challenges faced during its production. Its distinctive elements, from the peculiarities of the pedal cars to the lip syncing of the child actors, contribute to its unique charm. Explore Bugsy Malone beyond its on-screen facade, delving into the intricacies of its production and the creative choices that define its character. 46 years since its release, the 1976 movie Bugsy Malone still shrouds one mystery the actor behind Looney Burgundy remains undisclosed. Amid the film's production challenges, the props and effects teams grappled with making splurge guns discharge cream safely. Numerous attempts, including wrapping it in wax balls, proved futile. In a daring trial, director Alan Parker fired the gun at the towering production manager, Garth Thomas, leaving a vivid mark on his forehead. Eventually, the guns settled for shooting ping-pong balls with cream applied in post-production. The Chinese laundry scene, a standout moment, unfolded in an old East End public bath building. These snippets, culled from a reliable source, shed light on intriguing aspects of Bugsy Malone's creation, offering a glimpse into the challenges faced and creative solutions devised during the film's making. In the casting of the film, Scott Bale's involvement carried an unexpected twist. Despite initially storming out of his audition, he was eventually cast in the role, showcasing a surprising turn of events in the selection process. Director Alan Parker's stance on the movie has undergone a transformation over the years. Initially ambivalent and omitting it from his biography and filmography, Parker later expressed pride in the project, revealing a shift in his perspective over time. A noteworthy aspect of the movie's production involves the extensive use of cream pies. With over a thousand pies thrown during filming, the process added a unique and perhaps challenging element to the production dynamics. These details, culled from a reliable source, provide insights into the casting dynamics, the director's evolving attitude, and an interesting production quirk involving cream pies. Explore Bugsy Malone beyond its surface, delving into these facets that contribute to its character. In the creation of Bugsy Malone, the entire cast, aged 16 or under during filming, brought a youthful energy to the screen. Director Alan Parker, acknowledging the challenges, noted an interesting casting switch the original blousy actress took on the role of Dandy Dan's equestrian partner, a detail not reflected in the credits. A thousand gallons of synthetic cream became a crucial element, replacing the initial plan of using shaving cream for the iconic splurge guns. The switch was prompted by the latter's ballistic shortcomings, causing discomfort to the actors. This pragmatic decision, sourced from a reliable website, averts eye irritation and ensures a smoother filming process. These behind-the-scenes glimpses into Bugsy Malone reveal the meticulous attention to detail. The film's unique dynamics, propelled by the young cast, the unexpected casting shift, and the ingenious solution to the cream gun conundrum contribute to its distinct character. In the quest for Fat Sam, director Alan Parker sought the naughtiest boy in a Brooklyn classroom. The unanimous choice, John Cassisi, landed the role effortlessly. The pedal cars, painstakingly handcrafted for the film, reached a maximum speed of around 10 miles per hour. Custom-built and pricey, each car matched the cost of a standard Mini at the time. Jodie Foster, portraying Talila, was left in tears as the crew transformed her appearance. Deceived about a simple rinse, her hair and eyebrows underwent peroxide bleaching and plucking, marking her first experience with such alterations. These behind-the-scenes snippets, gleaned from a reputable source, provide insight into the unconventional casting method, the meticulous craftsmanship of the pedal cars, and the emotional toll of transformations on the cast. 